With some of the unit reveals from Total War Warhammer 3, we've seen a lot of different variety of, well, artillery pieces. For both Kislev and for Korn, we've seen some fun stuff, right? We've seen Little Grom, um, the big, huge chariot drawn cannon for Kislev that is pulled by two bears, and we've seen the skull cannons of Korn. But both of these things kind of bring up two big questions in my mind. Well, one big question in my mind based off two, off two uh, concrete facts. Are there going to be a ton of mobile artillery in Total War Warhammer 3? And just by looking at the 8th edition or even previous editions of lore and rules, we have plenty of examples of that being the case. I think when we take a look at Total War Warhammer 2, or even 1 for that matter as well, um, compared to 3, I think we're going to be seeing a ton of more artillery um that is way more mobile on the battlefield horse drawn bear drawn uh, 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 mourn fang drawn i don't know huge beast drawn uh, uh, cannon pieces or artillery pieces so in this video today i want to discuss those we're going to go through each of the factions talk about hey you know this could possibly lead to these things we'll be talking about kislev we'll be talking about the chaos demons we'll go into the ogre kingdoms i'll then go into briefly for cathay because we don't really have anything concrete for the most part it is fan made and for them and conjecture so we have no real concrete idea of what their artillery pieces can be and then i'll conclude it on possible uh, dlc slash other things that they could be putting into warhammer 3 as campaign packs or whatnot in the future well, let's get started here on our mobile artillery video for total war warhammer 3 and as always guys feel free to like comment subscribe always helps out and you can pre-order warhammer 3 if you haven't yet with the nexus store link in my description well let's get going on this video so to start out we're going to talk about kislev and i think this has got a lot of obvious ones in it. Right? we've already seen kislev's little grom bear cannon and that thing is a behemoth so to talk about kislev we can look at stuff like elements from the lore, right? When we look at the Storm of Chaos supplement in the Lore Master's Journal, week six, we get this little ditty, right? Um, his attack was aided by the arrival of the Griffin Legion from the west and support by cannons sent from the city of Kislev. Forged from the bells of the city's cathedral, these cannons are believed to be blessed by the gods, although the frail brass of the cannons is liable to crack and break under intense firing. And then below it, it tells you, hey, great cannons can be chosen as a rare choice for Kislev in the tabletop. So we and we also see evidence of Kislev. And I even put this in my Kislev roster video of um, them having horse drawn carronade style cannons. So having a mobile cannon platform is very possible because remember, the little Grom is a tier three artillery piece. We probably have another artillery piece to see in Kislev when we get that roster reveal. And from there, that could be some of the lighter cannons that we get from Erengrad. Erengrad has the Cannoneers compound, something that we talked about again in the Kislev Cities lore video. And it talks about the uh, cannons that are coming out of Erengrad being lighter cannons than the ones coming out of Nuln. So here's this little bit. Erengrad cannons are not up to the standard of those made in Nuln, but they are substantially cheaper and lighter, which makes them better suited to ships. So any of the ships that are around that Sea of Claws are going to be using some of these cannons. But it also says here, a few mercenary companies use Erengrad cannons on land, however. So giving us a possibility of a lighter, more mobile cannon being present in Kislev's roster rather than just a, simply another great cannon. Now, it could, it could absolutely just be uh, a brass cannon of Kislev and it is just a set artillery piece but with also having the presence of the war sleds in Kislev's roster having both the Griffin Legion having uh, the winged lancers having bear cavalry which might also have another version of two we don't know if bear cavalry has a lighter quote-unquote version but having so many mobile elements to their um roster right? not in, not including of course the horse archers and possibly any other ungol variations thus of having a mobile artillery piece would make a lot of sense and i think it's something that we have not yet seen for kislev and one that i think that we will see we'll find out hopefully soon but with that i think it again it fits the the motif of kislev being a more mobile um fighting force I guess you could say and I think that as a whole for what they want to do for Warhammer 3 it seems that they want this to be a more I guess mobile again mobile game I mean when we played this brass keep um, battle 
it was a constant moving uh, a battlefield, right? We, we couldn't stay in one place. We couldn't have a hard point. We couldn't essentially quote unquote corner camp. And that might be different, of course, when we jump into the actual campaign and we have standard campaign maps to deal with. But I think that with Warhammer 3, they're trying to move away from less of a static artillery emplacement and more of these mobile artillery pieces. And we're going to see some of that too when we jump on over to Corn. So let's switch over to the Chaos Demons to talk about a little bit more now. Now with Corn, we did get that, again, that Skull Cannon, right? And we saw that thing spitting off downrange in the Brass Citadel battle that we all played. And we get, oh, it's a pretty interesting looking uh, model, right? It's, it, essentially is, is extremely sci-fi looking but it's in fantasy and that's just the way it's going to be when it comes to chaos demons they're kind of nuts but again we get a flaming attacks style artillery piece and it was quite mobile it was very uh quick on the battlefield too i don't think i've got its unit card unfortunately but it was still a quite a, a mobile little artillery platform so that tells me that we're already getting it with the Chaos Demons. But if we look further into this, we can look at Zinch's Burning Chariots. These things have um, a flaming attack as well. And they have the pink and blue flames on them, whatever it is. And they're on top of their um, little floating, disgusting manta rays of doom of, of Zinch. And with that, we could possibly be seeing something that it doesn't do conventional range damage like, hey, it's going to be shooting an arrow, it's going to be shooting um, a bullet, whatever it is. I see this more in line with a lighter artillery piece that isn't actually quote-unquote artillery. You could look at it almost like the Death Stalkers from uh, Camry, right? For I'm sorry, from the Tomb Kings. Uh, this kind of uh, projectile that is launched. And of course, with Zinch, it would be a type of fire of some sort, right? Pink or blue, um, exalted fire of Zinch, as it would call during the shooting phase. The flamer can shoot either a pink fire or a blue fire. This can be done even if the burning chariot moved in the preceding movement phase. So we get this scene in even the elements of Zinch, which we have not yet seen at all in Total War Warhammer 3. And even further, we have a big centerpiece in the Soul Grinders, the Ion Doom Striders. And these things are, they're really more of a 40k looking model. And to be totally honest with you, I think they're just too sci-fi for fantasy. And if I, my personal opinion, I hope that uh, Creative Assembly does not put them into Total War Warhammer 3. They might make their way. It is what it is if they do, but I'd rather have big, huge, cataclysmic greater demons than the Soul Grinder, which looks like it was just shoehorned into Warhammer Fantasy from 40k. But that's neither here nor there. Maybe that's the point for another video. Who knows? But they have got a Harvester Cannon on board because they have a big, gigantic Orc Boy Mecha Claw, and they've got big, spinally legs like that are uh, like mech legs. So why not have a Harvester Cannon? This allows the Soul Grinder to fire Grape Shot, as described in the Warhammer rulebook. If a misfire is rolled on the artillery dice, the Soul Grinder instead suffers a wound with no saves of any kind. So, it is straight up a cannon. It's not even like a, oh, could be cannon, could not be. So, eh. And even then, it uses the artillery die to roll it. The same way, and this is something I forgot to mention, that the Exalted Fire of Zinch does. If a misfire is rolled when resolving pink fire or blue fire, the Burning Chariot suffers D6 strength D6 hits with the Warp Flame special rule. Armor saves cannot be taken against wounds caused by these hits. <laughs> That's like a disclaimer when you're buying something on uh, over, the, over the TV. But um, nonetheless, these two things, having this presence of an artillery die, um, does tell us again mobile artillery pieces there's none of these are saying like hey this is just like the artillery piece of chaos in the past that was a set piece even then it had some wheels and moved a little bit just like the other ones do in the game I mean, they, they have to they can't be completely stationary right they're all the uh, uh artillery pieces we've seen up to this point have had the ability to move so i'm not saying that the other pieces don't and these are going to i'm saying these pieces across everything we're going to discuss today is much faster and it is meant to to move um quicker the closest thing we get to it is war wagons that have the mortar attached to them or the the mortar variant of the war wagon and even then we possibly might see that for the war sleds so it does lead to another conversation now with the Ogre Kingdom. So let's take a look at some of their variations and what they could be doing um, for their artillery pieces. Now the Ogres are unique with theirs because when we look at the Chaos Demons, it's got kind of a sci-fi twist. Like you've got essentially like a, a motorbike with a cannon on top. With Kislev, you've got drawn um, variations of artillery pieces with bears. 
With the ogres, namely the lead belchers, you have ogres holding cannons that they've just torn off or they've salvaged from the remnants of a battlefield. You know, they just ripped them off of carriages, whatever it is. So you quite literally have ogres holding cannons and this would be a mo a mobile artillery piece you could kind of look of it more in the lines of a skaven weapon team right their their mortar team is essentially a mobile artillery piece more or less but this would be a little bit more of a punch right because this is an actual cannon housing now the actual lore for this too is they're not walking around with like a satchel of cannonballs sometimes i do here and there in some of the pictures but for the most part lead belchers jam their lead belcher gun with just all sorts of mishmash and hodgepodge of items to just jam in there and shoot back at you now having played high elves against these i can tell you that a strength four cannon ripping through your toughness three elves was not fun it was not fun at all i didn't realize how terrifying it was until i actually had to fight them and it was just turned my whole army to pulp neither here nor there still you get lead belchers as carrying cannons and i don't think they're going to be uh doing basically great cannon shots because again think of the lore they're they're jamming forks they're jamming uh, knives or swords there there's all sorts of crap in these cannons that they're launching down range at you so i look at it more of a shotgun style unit with an ap profile um it would do a lot of damage and very close but outside of that you know it'd be different so here's this little little blurb to fire their weighty guns lead belchers fill the barrel with shovel-like handfuls of crude black power metal shot rusty nails an assortment of wickedly bladed weaponry and occasionally an actual cannonball or similar size boulder so again you can see that these things are just hodgepodge together now on top of now as far as like actual artillery pieces the first one would be knoblar scrap launchers and again this is shooting a, a hodgepodge of random items at the enemy but this thing is being pulled by a rhinox so the rhinox would pull this cart along this catapult along and then it would launch the scrap into the air um number packs I'm sorry, the Nobbler packs the launcher cup with bundles of weapons and have them accrued uh, that have accrued during the battle. So um, you can see it's just a, a random smattering of anything they can get their hands on. So this gives you that, again, that furthering of mobile artillery for just the Ogre Kingdoms. And we'll touch on their last thing here with the Iron Blasters. And these have a pretty cool lore. You know, one guy noticed uh, Bro Bogart is his name. Bogart Seven Bellies. Um, noticed a discarded uh, cannon that was used during the war with the Sky Titans. The ogres fought the Sky Titans before the Sky Titans all kind of like blended into the mountainside and disappeared from history with the few that remained. But this castle mounted gun, he took from the Sky Titans and loaded it onto a essentially a, a cart that a Rhinox um dragged for him i said mornfang earlier is that is not it it was a rhinox that 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 uh drags this cannon here so again you get a bigger heavier scarier cannon right because the iron blaster is larger even than the cannons the lead belchers use because lead belchers are supposed to be using essentially to kind of think of it easier a great cannon iron blaster i guess you could look at it more the size of probably little grom if we're just trying to kind of give you a, a sense of scale so Again, Iron Blasters would essentially be the Little Grom, but for the Ogre Kingdoms. So you can see plenty of that being present. But before we jump into uh, Cathay, I really quickly want to jump into the Chaos Dwarfs. And as you would have assumed, they have a ton of black powder, steam powered type uh, destructive war engines and war machines. The first one here is the Iron Demon War Engine. And this is essentially... Uh, <laughs> It's like it's like a motorized battering ram with two cannons strapped on top of it. It's just the easiest way to describe it. Um, it's essentially, think of uh, Thomas the Tank Engine, but corrupted by the Chaos Dwarfs and has two gun barrels slapped on his head. It's awesome. So this thing would essentially be a, a cannon on top of a battering ram like i said and we'll see right here it says this means that every iron demon this means that every iron demon is also a powerful war machine in its own right a fully mobile artillery piece or murderous killing engine it will to smash through fortifications and hack down ranks of living soldiers with equal ease so i could see this thing on the battlefield just being pretty destructive 
Um, I, I think of it more in the pretense of a siege, less of on an open field battle, but I bet you it probably has, like, um, or I bet you would have a shorter range of a gun, a, a, an actual cannon in and of itself, because it is a cannonade. It only has an 18 inch range in tabletop. So I could see this thing as getting up close and personal, doing the damage, and it would be all about ramming things, right? So maybe it's almost like a chariot piece where the idea is to pull through units. You don't just leave it in perpetual combat so that it can use its steam cannonade. And the cannonade might be like an, uh, an activatable, who knows? And even moving down here, we've got the Dreadquake Mortar, which is essentially, think of, um, it's, it's like all, always when you play those World War II games where they show the artillery piece that is mounted on an actual train, that's the Dreadquake Mortar, similar pretense or a similar context and it's a mortar so you know again mobile artillery piece obviously it's not on an actual train it just has that same look to it it doesn't need the actual rails to run about it has like three compartments one's the actual engine that pulls it one's the actual mortar and then the other one is the uh, coal and also the means to actually shoot um, ammunition out of the thing so uh, the Dreadquake Mortar is another really prime example of a mobile artillery piece. Moving into the Death Streaker Rocket Launcher, we have something that might be probably the closest thing that the dwarfs or the Chaos Dwarfs get to an actual normal emplaced battery. But still, even then, you could make the argument that looking at the pictures, reading the lore, it would just simply be, oh, okay, it's motorized, it's got a steam engine, and it can just propel on its own. Even moving to the last piece here, the Magma Cannon. This one... Okay, if if the very first one, the Iron Demon War Engine, was um, an engine with a cannon on top of it, this is just an engine that is a cannon. Like, that is it. It's a flame cannon, and it is going to do some serious damage here. So this would, of course, be a flame cannon, and it does not have your typical... Um, uh, uh, profile here because it's got a range of 24 it does flaming attacks rather than just your standard like hey it's just going to be an armor piercing cannon um, so it would just kind of roll right into things the magma cannon is fired using the usual usual procedure for firing a cannon as provided in the rule book except that instead of rolling to bounce the shot instead of instead place the teardrop shaped template with the narrow end positioned where the shop landed and the wide end placed straight forward ahead along the direction of fire. So basically it explodes and then shoots fire out, which is pretty sick, right? It's supposed to represent this ball of magma magma exploding and then causing like a wave of magma down onto the enemy. So it's pretty cool. Again, short range. You can tell that the majority of the armament for the Chaos Dwarf is mainly short range with the rocket launcher and the mortar being its longer ranged weapons. But Again, all the pieces here are on some sort of steam engine that is pushing or pulling these things across the battlefield. Now for Cathay, we don't really have a whole ton, right? We've got uh, speculation and we've got fan driven up lists and a lot of that stuff has black powder in some way, shape or form. It's got rocket launchers, it's got rocket launchers on gigantic war turtles. Uh, we see the big, huge automatons that would probably have maybe like like a Gundam with some sort of like shoulder cannon, but not really, but something kind of like it, unfortunately. Like, sent plenty of ways that artillery for Cathay could be mobile. And if there's no existing, you know, preconceived notions of what their roster is, Creative Assembly and Games Workshop can just draft up enough mobile artillery pieces to fit the motif that has been created so far in what we're looking at for the, the existing rules for 8th edition and so on and so forth for Warhammer 3. Hey, you know what? We've got plenty of our mobile artillery pieces in the Dwarfs, in Ogre Kingdoms, in um, Demons, and in Kislev. We're going to have to invent or make or say they always existed for Cathay. So Cathay is a small entry here today, but I did want to just kind of briefly touch on it. But let's now move into some possible stuff for DLC. I guess it's not really fair because we don't know if it's going to be Ogres or if it's Chaos Dwarfs for the quote-unquote pre-order DLC. So I guess they both should have been in this section, but... They have their own full list to talk about. But for Dogs of War, we have Bronzino's Galloper Guns. And these are 
exactly what I was talking about earlier. It is a horse-drawn carronade that has a cannon on top of it. So, well, it, it is a horse-drawn carronade, and that is the cannon. So the Galloper gun would be a smaller, lighter range, but way more mobile um, artillery piece. And we get these in Total War Empire, right? So, or Empire Total War. So we could see them put into Total War Warhammer 3. It would, again, fit that mobility that we see with um, a lot of the other factions we've talked about so far, if Dogs of War were a DLC. Now, I've talked about this before in my video on possible future DLC factions, but since this one is part of the Tamarcon book and we've already dipped into it so much with the Chaos Dwarfs, let's talk about the Marienburg class land battleship, and it is exactly what it is. It is a battleship on land, so it's got it's filled with cannons at the front, on the sides, and the back, so this thing would essentially be a gigantic mobile artillery platform that would roll around the battlefield, shooting things apart with its fusillade, or fusillade, sorry. Um, and that's that's pretty sick. That's a pretty cool idea for me. Uh, even moving into halflings. Halflings have a steam tank with, uh, they call it a uh, Kathleen half tank, that is essentially a steam tank carrying um, a big, huge thing of soup. Uh, the soup cannon has a firing arc of 45 degrees from the front of the half tank. Place the flame template touching the, the cannon and roll artillery dice. Move the template this many inches forward, so on and so forth. So it's got a soup cannon. Something I didn't think you think you knew existed in Warhammer, did you? Well, there you go. Halfling's Kathleen soup cannon coming to the rescue. And they also have a, a hot pot, which is a catapult in which they launch um exactly what it is the hot pot catapult is a bizarre piece of artillery but the history at least is peculiar suffice to say it involves a halfling cook under goblinoid attack some leftovers and a rudimentary knowledge of ballistics so plenty of evidence for the halflings even for the norse dwarfs right for the dwarfs of uh, krakadrak we get the norse dwarf war mammoth um, the norse dwarfs also make use of the war mammoths in times of war with their own invention the bolt thrower the bolt thrower tower the bolt thrower tower combines the ferocity of the war mammoth with the engineering expertise of the dwarfs the bolt thrower tower has a bolt thrower with a crew of three norse dwarfs so again mobile artillery pieces left and right so in conclusion and i i think you know i misspoke earlier if i'm looking at just simply the um the Norse Dwarf War Mammoth, we do have mobile artillery pieces, right? We get that in the Lizard Men. We get that with any of these Hadabs um, on the backs of large monsters that create mobile artillery. We even get it with the Vampire Coast, right? We've got the, um, the Necrofex Colossus that, you know, it's shooting cannonballs. It even has like a Transformers look to it as it spins its dragon, it's a, a, a cannon arm and blows things apart you could even also make a claim that the necrolith colossus from the tomb kings the bone giant could absolutely be a mobile artillery piece as well it's shooting these huge um, arrows down range and it is moving on its own accord so we do have somewhat of a precedence of these things established but i guess what i'm saying mobile artillery pieces i'm directly referencing a cannon or something of the sort that is moving of its own volition either by dr something drawing it or it's got like an, an engine that's powering it when i look at the monstrous versions of these that's already existing in warhammer 2 and has been brought out we've not gotten something quite like this and the closest thing would be a war wagon with mortars so go ahead and let me know in the comment section below what you guys feel about this uh do you think that we're getting a ton of mobile artillery pieces for warhammer 3 do you think this is a harebrained idea i, I think that as we see more about these rosters and we kind of get a little bit more divulged, we'll have a better idea of the direction of artillery pieces in Total War Warhammer 3. But I'm really excited to find out more about the game, really excited to share it with you guys uh, whenever that information comes out. But as always, thank you so much for watching here today. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, but have a good one and take care.